talking. Um, we'd like to take a few of you folks and just uh, ask a couple of quick questions about the church and uh, uh, have that recorded. That would put, be put into our uh, church video uh, that we're going to be putting out and uh, uh, working on, uh, like I said, been working on that. Uh, we're, I think we've got two of the videos done completely and we've got a few more videos we're going to try and make all together. So um, uh, if you are willing to do that, that would be helpful. What's that? I, it won't be on the post office wall, amen. You won't. Uh, I promise you that. Yeah, it will be on the internet. It gets put on YouTube, and uh, uh, it will be on there, and others will be able to see it and all that. But uh, uh, just little things, little snippets about the church is all we want to record real quick. Like so, if you're willing to do that after the service, come come see me. Luke chapter number two, and uh, obviously there's uh, uh, there's a reason why you know being that it's Christmas Eve, you know. I, by the way, uh, I mentioned this uh, recently, I don't remember, uh, in the last couple of weeks here. I know, and I hope you know, that Jesus was not born on December 25th, all right? Uh, <clears throat> there's uh, some proof that uh, he's actually born uh, uh, either, uh, it would have been either March, April, or uh, September, October is actually kind of where he would have been born. But that being said... I'm not going to be dogmatic and say, bless God, this is when he was born. Uh, we do know this. We know he was born. Amen. That I'll be dogmatic about. That I will, uh, you know, that, them's, there are some fighting words, if you will. Um, I will, uh, um, you know, defend that Jesus Christ was born here on earth. And that fact, uh, you know, we know that happened. We know that uh, there were some things that transpired uh, in, leading up to it and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, some things that happened here in Luke chapter number two, especially there was some things that we can certainly learn. And uh, normally I read uh, through a bunch of scripture. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, read maybe the first three verses here. Uh, then we'll have a word of prayer and then get right into the lesson here this morning. Excuse me. Luke chapter number two, and beginning there in verse number one. It says this, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And uh, the title of this uh, uh, Sunday school lesson is Lessons to be Learned at the Nativity. Lessons to be learned at the Nativity. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, thank you for each one that's able to be here. Lord, I know there's some that have sickness. Lord, some uh, that are spiritually sick as well. But Lord, uh, we're thankful for those that were able to make it here this morning. And Lord, I just pray that you'd touch hearts and, and open up our eyes, Lord, our spiritual eyes, Lord, here this morning. Lord, that we'd be attentive and Lord, not miss out on these things that uh, we uh, look at here today. And Lord, I just pray that you'd guide and direct uh, my lips and my words. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me say those things that are needful, Lord, that are pertinent to uh, this lesson. And Lord, that would be applicable to each and every person that's here. Bless now your word. Lord, bless uh, uh, your people. We'll be sure to give you all praise and glory for what you're about to do here in this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I forget, by the way, there's cookies downstairs. Is that right? Uh, okay, not for everybody, all right? All the adults running, you know, pushing kids out of the way, amen, pushing them down the stairs. Don't do that, all right? Uh, but all the teenagers, uh, after the uh, Sunday school hour, you'll have a few minutes uh, to go downstairs, and it's in the teen area, which is downstairs here, kind of in that back corner there in the fellowship hall. Uh, but I think it's on the table, is that right? It's either on the table or in the kitchen. Okay, we'll, we'll figure that out, or you guys can figure it out. <laughs> Smell around for the cookies, amen? You'll find them. But uh, yeah, teens will find cookies. Oh, this cookie, amen? But uh, anyway, so uh, after, uh, between uh, Sunday school and church, all of you that are in, uh, uh, you know, it'd be uh, sixth grade on up to 12th grade, uh, so junior and senior high, all of you can uh, uh, certainly go, get in there and uh, accomplish that. And uh, my unplug, oh, okay. Uh, maybe if something got, came unplugged, Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, lessons to be learned, uh, though, at the nativity. You know, there's a number of things that happen that transpire uh, there when Jesus is born, and uh, 
but one of the things that uh, we first I want to look at, and that is this. Number one, God orchestrates all things. God orchestrates all things. You know, the fact that, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned this, uh, there was a, I think it was Wednesday night, I mentioned about, it was a miracle that uh, there was a taxing that went out, you know. That taxing was first made uh, a decree by Cyrenius when he was governor. Then uh, Caesar Augustus becomes uh, the ruler, and he makes a decree. Hey, uh, this is what I want you to do. Go to your city. And uh, had he not made that decree, you think about this, Joseph would have had no reason to bring Mary down to Bethlehem. That was uh, something that was orchestrated by God. Everything we have to realize in life is orchestrated by God. Amen? Yes, we know there is, and I'm not going to get into it this morning, there is God's perfect will, and then there's also God's permissive will, all right? Uh, I'm not going to get into that discussion this morning. That's not the purpose of that uh, part of that, that lesson. But certainly we know there is a, a desire, a goal for the Lord uh, to accomplish something, and that is exactly uh, what he does. He lines things up. He orchestrates things. You know, uh, uh, the things that are happening in this world aren't happening by happenstance. You know, it wasn't like somebody like, oh, oh, oops, I just uh, figured this out. No, God allows many things to be uh, discovered. You know, uh, uh, for instance, technology. Who would have thought, you know, here we can watch, you know, praise the Lord for technology. Uh, I, I mentioned, uh, uh, I've mentioned that not too long ago. This doesn't replace being here, amen? Praise the Lord for this. If you're sick, you know, like Brother Rick, Brother Rick, we hope you're watching and we're praying for you, amen? But the reality of it is, if you're feeling well, be here, amen? You know, uh, uh, there's a football game that'll be going on in about a half an hour. Guess what? Somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, whether you watch them or not. That football game has no uh, eternal value whatsoever. And some people are like, oh, well, we got to watch the Packers. Look, uh, I love the Packers. I love watching the Packers. Amen. I love cheering them on. I love uh, screaming at the TV and, you know, uh, yelling uh, at the umpires and yelling at the players and, and all that. I have fun with it. Amen. But I won't miss the house of God over a game. Amen. Why? This has eternal value. You had your hand up. Yes, sir. Amen. I mentioned that Wednesday night, how she was uh, riding on a donkey. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, when Mrs. Naomi was pregnant with Timothy, uh, we were like, okay, we got to have this baby. So we went over every single bump with the bus. She sat all the way in the back of the bus and, and you know, we were hitting bumps and, and uh, we we're like, okay, no, nothing, you know, and, and what's that? Uh, no, he's good. Amen. He, uh, he, did, uh, he, he came at the right time, amen, and, uh, uh, but praise the Lord. Uh, you know, it was amazing that, uh, you know, as far as the, uh, how God orchestrated everything that happened, the fact that, you know, uh, you know, Jesus was born exactly when he was. Remember, you have the, uh, uh, the, the wise men coming from the east, amen. All those different things were orchestrated by the Lord. In life... As far as our life is concerned, there are, uh, yes, we know that Satan many times will try to orchestrate things as well. We understand that. But you have to understand, remember, even Job, when uh, Job lost all the things that he did, that was still orchestrated by God. Remember, he even said, God said, yea, hath thou considered my servant Job? He said that to Satan, remember that? And too often we get in our mind's eye, we think, well, you know what, uh, uh, this is the way it ought to happen, and, and, uh, but we have to understand, hey, God orchestrates all things. You know, uh, uh, I, I've just, just seen studying this, uh, I studied most of this on Friday, knowing we were celebrating uh, Christmas on Saturday, so there were some things that I was thinking about, and I was like, you know, uh, in my mind, again, all the things that God has orchestrated, even for our church. You know, uh, uh, here we've been praying for a bus driver, and... Uh, uh, knowing we needed to try to get him uh, uh, his license, uh, there was some things that I was kind of frustrated, not at him, I was frustrated about the process. And then, uh, uh, you know, the uh, gentleman that took, gave him the test uh, said, hey, Pastor Hallett, why don't you become a training provider? I would not have I would not have wanted to become a training provider. I didn't want, that was the least thing from my mind. But now... Our church is able to train 
uh, you know, our church is a training site. I'm a training provider. Now you want to get your CDL? Now we can help you get your CDL. Amen? But it was because uh, the Lord allowed some things to happen and I had a conversation with another gentleman. Sometimes we think in our mind's eye, we think, well, this is the way it ought to happen. And then uh, we, un- we have to understand, we, you know, it's like that saying, uh, hindsight is always twenty twenty, isn't it? And you look back and you're like, oh, now I understand why God allowed this. Amen? And you and I as Christians need to understand that God does orchestrate every single thing. We may not always like how he uh, orchestrates things. Amen? We may not always like the outcome of things. I'll guarantee you, Job wasn't like, oh, great, hey, my my kids died. Hey, I lost my uh, source of income. You know, oh, wow, I lost most of my servants. Wow, this is great. He wasn't doing that. I guarantee you that. But he did say this, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hey, God is in control of my situation, God is in control of everything that's going on, and that's exactly what happened here. God orchestrated every single little detail down to uh, uh, when Christ was to, uh, to be born, where he's to be born, uh, the uh, time frame, all those different things. Amen? Yes, sir. You got to trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So number one, we realize God orchestrates all things. Number one, God orchestrates all things. Number two, learn to obey like Joseph did. Learn to obey like Joseph did. I want you to notice back in our text there in uh, verse number four, and I mentioned we will look at Matthew chapter one during this point, and then that'll be it, but uh, uh, just during this point, and then they will uh, stay in Luke chapter number two here. But uh, uh Uh, In Luke chapter number two, verse number four, it says this, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. You know, uh, uh, then look with me at Matthew chapter number one. Matthew chapter number one. And notice in verse number 18. Matthew chapter number one, verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make, a, uh, make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But uh, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to uh, take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the, pro, uh, by the, uh, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from uh, sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name, what? Jesus. Nowhere do you ever see in the scriptures, you know, there's not much uh, that's said about Joseph. You know, I, I, I was going to preach a message about Joseph, and then uh, Holy Spirit led a different direction anyways for uh, uh, this morning. But uh, one of the things that we need to realize, you know, the, the things that we do know about Joseph, you know, there's not much said. We know he was a carpenter. We know that. Uh, we know that uh, uh, he was of the lineage of David. Amen. Uh, we know that. Uh, but uh, other than that, we know he was a just man uh, because it says there uh, in he being a just man uh, and not willing that, to make her a, uh, a public example. You know, so there was, he, he believed in justice, righteousness, doing what's right. Uh, he, he, you know, was concerned about uh, that which was right. But never do we see him uh, interject his own opinion or his own desire. 
you know, we never see him, you know, we do know he was going to, he was willing to, you know, uh, you know, put uh, Mary away privately. He didn't want to, you know, there was a, a balance there between uh, justice and mercy, you know. Uh, he was trying to find that perfect balance, and it came uh, uh, to him uh, through this dream that he was able to perfectly find that balance. But you and I as Christians need to realize the example uh, of, uh, of Joseph here. He learned to obey not knowing what every single step would take, where every single step would take him, not knowing what everything that he was asked to do would require of him. You know, uh, uh, here he is, uh, he's, uh, you know, supposed to marry uh, this lady named Mary, a young lady, I'm going to say uh, a virgin, uh, we'll do it that way, uh, this virgin, Mary, uh, and uh, uh, he was uh, uh, planning on marrying her, then all of a sudden he finds out she's pregnant. You know, uh, I don't know about you, if you, uh, uh, you that are married, uh, you know, if you'd ever found out that uh, your uh, soon-to-be wife was, uh, you know, pregnant before you got married, you're like, whoa, hey, wait a second, we didn't do anything, amen? Uh, you know, it caused concern, amen? And so I'm sure there was some of that weight that's on his mind, and, and, uh, but you know, uh, he uh, here's what the Lord says there in Matthew chapter number one, and in Luke chapter number two, uh, and uh, he certainly, uh, you know, says, okay, uh, here's what, uh, what is required, and, and, uh, but this is what I'm going to do. Uh, he certainly uh, is willing to obey what the Lord tells him to do. Hey, take Mary, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't do anything with her. The child that is in her, uh, that's uh, of the Holy Ghost. And uh, you're to, uh, you know, uh, call his name Jesus. You know, could you imagine, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have uh, my son, uh, my oldest, before Miss Naomi and I got married, one of the things we discussed was children. We, we, we didn't talk about uh, exactly how many. We, we kind of said, hey, it would be nice if we had, you know, uh, the discussion we were talking about was about a dozen kids. That was our plan. That was uh, what our desire was. And, uh, uh, of course, we know the Lord had other plans. And uh, so, <clears throat> but one of the things I told her, I said, you know, I said, uh, I'd really like the name Timothy. I, I would like to name our first son Timothy. And uh, I said, I, I like the name Shauna. I said, I'm not sure about the spelling, but I like the name Shauna. And uh, uh, so, you know, uh, if we could name our first uh, son, Timothy, uh, name him Timothy the third, and our first daughter, Shauna, um, I'm fine with that. And she said, oh, she said, well, I like the name uh, Thomas. So the second boy, can we name Thomas? And the second girl, can we name Cheyenne? We're like, yeah, that sounds great, amen? And uh, so we had that discussion. And then we were like, oh, hey, Shauna could be named with a CH, and, and the two girls have CH, and the boys have Ts, and that's what we ended up with, amen? Why? Because that's what we had a discussion. You know, my sister, uh, she happens to be here today. Uh, she has six children. All six children, our uh, first name uh, begins with, uh, the first letter of their name begins with a C, every single one of them. And if I can remember it, Colt, Chloe, uh, Caitlin, Clarissa, Christian, and Cruz. Is that right? Did I get them all? Okay. Whew. Uncle Tim is good. He's right up there with uh, brownie points. Amen. But the reality of it is this. Joseph could have easily said, hey, I'm going to name this kid Joseph. He could have been dis disobedient that way. Amen? He could have said, well, I don't really want to go, uh, you know, take Mary. I'm going to find somebody else. Because Mary didn't keep herself pure, apparently, because, you know, he could have easily done that. Amen? But instead, he was willing to be obedient. The Lord said, hey, take Mary to you. Hey, name, uh, name that child that's in her, Jesus. Amen? So there was some obedience that he was willing to do. He may not have always understood it. And you and I as Christians, listen carefully, you and I as Christians may not always understand. You know, you ever, you ever uh, um, I remember years ago, my dad would say, this is what I want you to do. He may not have always explained why. Amen? But I had to learn as a young child to just say, yes, sir. I may not have always understood the reason why uh, something was done a certain way. Now, later on, he would take the time to explain some things. Amen? I learned that from him. I, I learned, 
Okay, I'm not going to push for the uh, reason why. He'll explain it to me later. I'll just, I'll just follow. Amen? And you and I, listen carefully, you and I have got to get to the point where we just say, Lord, I'll submit to you. I'll follow you. I don't understand why. I, don't, I, don't, I, I cannot see uh, beyond the bend or, uh, around the corner there, but Lord, I'm just going to follow you and I'm going to obey you and watch what God will do. You and I have to get to the point, though, where we learn to obey just like Joseph did. He didn't sit there and argue with the Lord. He didn't sit there and say, well, I want my opinion to be heard. He was just willing to say, okay, Lord, I'll submit. I'll I'll follow. And you and I have to be willing to uh, follow uh, uh, and obey like Joseph did. As far as the lessons to be learned there at the nativity, first of all, number one, God uh, orchestrates all things. Number two, learn to obey like Joseph did. Number three, you need to seek the Savior like the shepherds did. You need to seek the Savior like the shepherds did. Look back in our text there in Luke chapter number two. As I said, we're, we're not going to look at Matthew anymore. Luke chapter number two, though. Excuse me, beginning there, verse number eight. Luke chapter number two and verse number eight. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Uh, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. You know, uh, uh, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away uh, 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 from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. You know, one of the things that uh, they did is uh, they were willing to seek where the Savior was at. You know, uh, uh, they weren't willing to just say, oh, great, yeah, they told us, those angels told us where he's at. All right, we'll just trust him. We'll, we'll, we'll trust that he's in Bethlehem. All right, that's good. They didn't do that. Instead, they were like, oh, hey, let us go now. Hey, guys, let's go together. Hey, let's go seek the same. Hey, we know he's here, amen. We know he's uh, in Bethlehem. What? Let's go find him, amen. Last, uh, this last January, January of uh, 23, it's hard to believe, we are one Sunday, one Sunday away from the end of this year. Where has 2023 gone? Amen. Yep, it just it has flown right by. But at the beginning of the year, I challenged every single person to read their Bible through in one year. I don't want a show of hands right now, all right? But if I were to ask, how many actually read your Bible through in one year? This last year, how many have actually read their Bible through? You'll be amazed, uh, by the way, the more you read your Bible through. Uh, I've read my Bible through, um, I don't know, probably at least uh, 25, maybe 30 times in my lifetime, something like that. Uh, since I've been pastoring, I read it through every year. Um, I tried, I, I'll admit, I tried uh, doing the six-month thing. Uh, and I failed, all right? Uh, that's something I, I did try, and I failed. But uh, I did finally finish it uh, within that year. And uh, generally, I've said this before, if you read four chapters a day, uh, you begin on January 1st, you just read four chapters a day, you'll be done by mid-October uh, with the entire Bible. Um, and uh, then usually what I do is I go back to the book of Proverbs and Psalms and, and a few other books maybe that I, the Lord lays on my heart uh, that I'll read. But the important thing is this, and I said all that to say this, just like the shepherds went to seek the Savior, this is how you and I seek the Savior. The problem is, is a lot of Christians know enough about the Bible to bug them, 
but not enough to bless them. Amen? They know, oh yeah, you know, they know Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. But they don't know any rest of that uh, chapter. There's some more in that chapter that's really good. Even the verses just before that is very good, amen? The problem is, is that a lot of Christians don't know it because they don't seek the Savior. You and I have got to get to the point where we're willing to say, Lord, I'm going to seek you. You know, uh, you ever, you ever, uh, you ever played a hide and go seek? Amen. Remember that game? It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? I was never one to give up when somebody was hiding and, and, uh, I was never one to even give up my position if somebody was trying to seek for me, but, but, uh, playing hide and go seek, I didn't want to give up. Why? I wanted to make sure I found everybody. Man, I'd look in every crook and cranny and, you know, under every chair and uh, closet and clothes and piles of clothes. And, and uh, I remember uh, one time, I think, uh, I don't remember if it was uh, Todd or if it was uh, uh, one of our neighbor kids that uh, uh, we were playing hide-and-go-seek in our basement. Our basement was just uh, uh, full of stuff, and uh, uh, there was a pile of stuff, and one of them hid under this pile of uh, whatever it was. I don't remember what it was, if it was clothes or bags or something, and uh, one of them hid underneath there, but it took me a while, amen, I kept going near it, I'm like, kept listening, kept listening, you know, and, and uh, uh, finally I realized, I'm like, oh, that's where, where the person's at, but that's the tenacity and the stick to if you will, of being willing to say, you know what, I'm going to seek for the Savior, and it may cost me something, it may cost me some time, it may cost me some energy, but it's valuable enough to me to be able to seek for the Savior. The problem with a lot of Christians is they, they want all the blessings of God. They want to, uh, you know, uh, and this is, please don't misunderstand me here this morning. This is not prosperity gospel, all right? But there are principles. If you follow those principles, God will bless, amen? You ignore those principles, God will not bless, it's, it's, it's just, it's in God's word, amen? And you and I have to get to the point where we say, okay, Lord, I'm just gonna follow you. I'm, I'm gonna obey your word. I'm gonna obey the, you know, what, what you've said. And uh, Lord, I'm gonna seek you uh, like the shepherds did. I'm not gonna just uh, take somebody else's word for it. I'm gonna seek you and find you and uh, be able to worship you. By the way, we can worship him as we uh, read the word of God, Amen. Problem is, is that we've, we've got a, uh, an idea of worship as, uh, you know, something where we're, you know, doing this, you know. That's not worship. That's drawing attention to self, amen? And you and I have to be willing to say, Lord, help me to seek you like the shepherds did. Lord, help me to, to find you. You know, uh, uh, they were, uh, uh, you know, they kept searching and they knew exactly uh, where he was. They knew where he was going to be. They even were told, hey, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. He's being, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So what'd they do? They went and they found him lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, Amen. And that's what you and I have to be willing to do. Say, Lord, would you help me to search for you? And uh, uh, Lord, help me to find you like the shepherds did. Oh, we see there, uh, the, uh, uh, seek the, we need to seek the Savior like the shepherds did. So some lessons to be learned from the nativity. Number one, God orchestrates all things. Number two, learn to obey like Joseph did. Number three, seek the Savior like the shepherds did. Number four, learn to give God the glory for all things. Learn to give God glory for all things. In Luke chapter number two, notice in verse number 14. Of course, this uh, verse 13 leads up to this. It says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, by the way, they weren't singing, amen. We had a, uh, uh, at the adult uh, uh, Christmas party, there was a trick question. We had a, a trivia thing and, and one of them was, what were, were the angels singing, Amen. And we heard, heard some different answers, and, and uh, a couple of them were humorous because I was like, either they don't know their Bible or they're just trying to be funny, amen? But uh, uh, they never sang, but they did say this, verse number 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You know, their desire was that God would get all glory, Amen. 
We need to learn to give God all the glory for all that he's done. Amen? This last week, uh, we had a uh, funeral. I had a funeral that I had to officiate at. And uh, it's a gentleman that I, I may have met. Uh, I couldn't remember if I'd met him. I think I had. It would have been at a funeral that I did. I think it was for his mom, if I remember correctly, about seven years ago six or seven years ago. And uh, the family said, hey, you know, he died of a heart attack. He was 64 years old, died of a heart attack. Can you uh, come do the service? I said, sure. So did, did the funeral for, for them. And, and uh, I was praying. I had some other folks praying. I think Wednesday night I mentioned about it. So I said, hey, would you pray that we'd see souls saved? And uh, on Thursday, there were five people that had raised their hand that they had uh, invited Christ into their heart uh, during the service. So Praise the Lord for five souls, amen. And uh, I want to give God the glory for all that. That was It's not me, it's not us, amen. It's God doing a work through us, amen. And you and I as Christians have to get to the point where we learn to give God glory for all things. You know, uh, I praise the Lord for uh, uh, Brother Jensen being able to get his uh, CDL, amen. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, uh, again, we're trying to start the bus route back up soon and uh, starting to get that uh, going again. Why? We want to see souls saved. We want to uh, reach into uh, homes and, and uh, through the bus route, be able to uh, see more folks saved and, and uh, see what God will do. Amen. But we want to make sure that God gets all the glory for it. It's not us. Amen. So we learn to give uh, God the glory for all things. <clears throat> Number one, uh, God orchestrates all things. Number two, learn to obey like Joseph did. Number three, seek the Savior like the shepherds did. Uh, number four, learn to give God the glory for all things. And lastly, number five, be willing to uh, learn some things and hide them in your heart like Mary did. Be willing to learn some things and hide them in your heart like Mary did. Look in verse number 19 of our text here. And, and notice, well, I'm, we're going to read verse number 18 and 19, I'm sorry. And uh, all they uh, that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Excuse me. You know, there's a number of things that Mary was privy to, that she was, you know, knew about. Um, she, of course, knew that she had been uh, with child by the Holy Ghost and knew that uh, uh, she had known no man and all those things. But then you look at all the things that uh, I'm sure she was told about. Uh, we know there, verse number 18, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by, notice there, that next two words, the shepherds. I'm sure there were some things that the shepherds told her about. She wasn't there in the field watching over the flock. She was in the, uh, in the inn, remember, or in the, in the uh, um, stable. And uh, uh, she was in the stable because there was no room for them in the inn. But all these different things, she knew and understood and knew that, okay, uh, God did these things. Joseph obeyed. Uh, you know, uh, the shepherds uh, uh, sought uh, for, for my son, to Jesus here. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, she certainly probably heard of uh, the angels, you know, saying, not singing, amen, saying glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So all these things are resonating in her mind. And sometimes in our life, you know, we, we, uh, we get going through life and, and sometimes we, we forget just even some of the little things in life. Amen? And we overlook the small things, the little things that God are, is doing. Amen? Sometimes we get so enamored with, you know, uh, we, we like to see headlines, don't we? You know, uh, uh, humans are, are a strange people. Uh, if there's any kind of suffering, if there's any kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, something where, you know, it's headlines, hey, Ten people died, you know. People are like, oh, let's look at that. What is there a video on that? You know, it's like, man, it, ten people just died in this accident, and you're looking for video for it? Come on. But you know, Christians kind of do the same thing. They want to see the headline things, and they miss the little things that God is doing. For instance, Mary. She wasn't. 
she wasn't one that was trying. Remember, she didn't ask for this to be given to her. She didn't ask for, uh, you know, even, even when, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the angel had come to her and, and told her, you know, when uh, um, uh, he told her, you know, Elizabeth was pregnant and all that. Remember that? Uh, she didn't sit there and say, you know, wow, you got something great when you got me. Thanks, Lord. No, as a matter of fact, just the opposite happened. She was like, why, why me? You know, that's in essence what she was asking. Why, why are you at, why, why, why do you consider me? But you and I have to be willing to get to the point where we think about all the little lessons that God is trying to teach us. And sometimes, again, there are some people, uh, it's like, you know, neon lights, God's trying to teach them a lesson and they're missing it. Amen? And others... All they see is that little sign, you know, that's on the side of the road that you're driving by at 80 miles an hour. And you saw it, and you're like, oh, wow, that's what that sign is. Amen? There are some people that catch those little signs, but others miss the big neon signs. And you and I have to get to the point where we're like Mary, and we're willing to say, okay, Lord, there's something you're trying to uh, teach me here. I, there's some things I need to learn. Lord, I don't have it all. By the way, none of us your pastor included, have, has arrived. None of us have gotten to the point where we say, hey, you know, that's it, I don't need to learn anymore. Amen? We've got to have a, a teachable attitude. That's exactly what happened with Mary. All we see there, uh, be willing to learn some things and uh, hide them in your heart like Mary did. Amen? A lot of good uh, lessons there to be learned in the, at the nativity. I hope you'll learn those things here today. I know it was a little bit different uh, uh, type of a lesson here this morning, but I hope you'll learn and uh, learn these things and hide them in your heart. Amen. All right, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so very much for meeting with us during the Sunday school hour. Lord, I pray that you would help us to learn these lessons, Lord, that, uh, um, and, and apply them to our own heart and our life here from the nativity scene. Lord, help us to realize uh, that uh, it can help us to have a closer walk with you, Lord, to be able to be more attentive to what you're trying to teach us and Lord, even knowing that you're just in complete, complete control. And Lord, I just pray now that you'll uh, continue to work in our hearts and lives. Let's now the preaching service this morning. Lord, I pray you'll uh, speak to hearts. Lord, I don't know every single heart, but maybe there'll be somebody here this morning or that will, uh, don't know uh, Lord Jesus Christ as their personal, uh, personal Savior. Lord, I pray that today would be the day of salvation for them. Bless now uh, our uh, preaching service in just a few moments. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Or you have a few minutes before the preaching service begins.